did you get? Welcome to Greenfield Christian Church. Welcome to all of you who are present in person 
And of course, welcome to all of you who are looking in on us and worshiping with us. Thank you for being there. Please let us know who you are and um, leave a note in our chat section. We are grateful for your presence with us. Today we have Reverend Rick Spleth here for a very special reason. He is installing your minister. As somebody very wise here said, we are putting you in your stall today. <laughs> I wonder who that was. But it's a, it's a wonderful day, it's a day of celebration and joy and I hope we all share in that sentiment and we all lighten up and we all uh, feel uplifted today because a whole new, new era starts today, officially. We of course have been practicing for this, but now we're here. So the beginning, as we always do, with announcements. Please um, lift your hand if you have something you haven't already alerted me to. But Marilyn Myers does have an announcement to make and so I'm going to invite her up here. I am calling your attention to the class on the New Linton study about following in Christ's footsteps, homeward bound. Now that's an exciting statement. You know, we plan nine months to the coming of a new child into the world. And then somebody announced an engagement, and then the approaching marriage, and it may be a year that we plan this wedding. But how much time is planned for your homeward trip when you get to join Jesus in your eternal home. So, our compassionate pastor and I have planned a five-week study, starting with our lives right now when we have accepted Christ and we are following him in his footsteps till we get to go home. We are going to study things like relationships, financial situations, um, health, and even grief. And grief is a class everybody should take for everything. We go through grief if we lose our job, if we lose our home, if a child dies, if a relative dies. It is not just you or your mate. So it is a, we have engaged two speakers to come and stay with us and there will be a lecture type uh, at the beginning and then discussion and class uh, answers and questions. Hopefully the questions come before the answers. <laughs> anyway, please let either Merlin or I know that you would like to come or call the office and uh, we're gonna start this the first Thursday in March and it'll be five weeks. I thank you very much. I hope to see you. Thank you, Marilyn. I should also alert you that we have three spots remaining for that class. So we keep it small, a limit of seven, so that we can have meaningful discussions and spend enough time together. So if there are, are there any other announcements? Anyone want to raise your hand and say something? I know there are several important meetings coming up this week, and I'll just name a few. You have them in your pink insert. Um, we have the uh, funeral celebration of life for Larry Gossett at uh, Early Wine, and that is uh, from at three o'clock. Visitation is from one to three. And um, Tuesday, we have a celebration of life for Jeff Harris, which will, will be here uh, beginning at one o'clock. And then we will proceed to the fellowship hall and uh, stay there for as long as you need to, to mingle with the family and, and help them cope. Our executive council meeting is at 7 p.m. on Thursday. So that's an important one. Please try to be there. Those are my announcements. If we have nothing else to offer, um, I will ask Jay to take us into our sacred time of contemplation before we worship. Thank you, Jay.
Join with me in the call to worship. Come, let us unite in gratitude to worship and praise our God who never leaves us unattended. We come as people called to pray together, to raise our voices together in thanksgiving, and to share the joy of caring for and loving each other. Just as the people prepared themselves to follow Moses to God's promised land, let us prepare ourselves to move toward God's vision for us. May God use each one of us to accomplish his will for us. May God help us identify our gifts and talents so that we may all become part of the kingdom of God as envisioned by Christ Jesus. Our invocation, we offer you all that we are and have and hope to be. We are. We have the opening hymn. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry.
Thank you. That was a gift. Will you please join me in the morning prayer, after which we will go into the Lord's Prayer. Loving and ever-present God, we come together today to worship you and to celebrate the things you have made possible for us. We offer you our gratitude for granting this congregation new insights into your vision for this church. We come with eager hearts prepared for the new opportunities that present themselves. Guide us in all that we undertake in the name of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to seeing new paths and understanding your will for us more concretely. Give us the courage and determination we need to boldly move in new directions toward all those things that call for care and compassion. We pray for the leadership of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the state of Indiana. Bless the work of our regional minister, Rick Spleth, and those who make up his staff. Help us all move forward as we work together toward the call we have received to serve God's creation through the Christian Church. We pray for the people of Greenfield Christian Church. We pray for all those present in person as well as those who participate in this worship service from their homes. Lift our spirits this day, Lord, and lighten our load so that we may for a short time celebrate in thanksgiving for the many ways in which you have blessed us and energized us once again. We ask for your forgiveness of our offenses against you. We ask for your healing hand to rest upon those experiencing health problems. And we pray for those who grieve the recent loss of their loved ones. Guide us so that we are able to bring peace and consolation. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together in that one prayer we know everybody knows, and even that little baby will learn soon. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is uh, Psalms 37, 1 through 11. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of the wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herbs. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and rejoice in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desire of the heart. Commit your way to the Lord Trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindications shine like the light, and the justice of the, your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out the evil deeds devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads on only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while the wicked will be more, no more. Though you look diligently for them, place, they will not be there. Be the meek shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. May God have a blessing to the reading of this. And our second reading today is taken from Exodus. 
the 18th chapter, beginning at verse 13. Listen with me for God's word speaking to us this day. The next day, Moses sat as a judge for the people, while the people stood around him from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone while all the people stand around you from morning until evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a dispute, they come to me and I decide between one person and another. And I make known to them the statutes and instructions of God. Moses' father-in-law said to him, what you are doing is not good. You will surely wear yourself out, both you and these people with you, for the task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone. Now listen to me. I will give you counsel and God be with you. You should represent the people before God and you should bring their cases before God. Teach them the statutes and instructions and make known to them the way they are to go and the things they are to do. You should also look for able men among all the people, men who fear God, are trustworthy, and hate dishonest gain, set such men over them as officers, over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Let them sit as judges for the people at all times. Let them bring every important case to you, but decide every minor case themselves. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this, and God so commands you, then you'll be able to endure, and all these people will go to their home in peace. So Moses listened to his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Moses chose able men from all Israel and appointed them as heads over the people, as officers over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. And they judged the people at all times. Hard cases they brought to Moses, but any minor case, they decided themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went off to his own country. Well, greetings, my friends. It is such a delight to be with you today. Over the two, last two years, out of an abundance of COVID caution, I have not been visiting our congregations. And while we are not yet out of all the pandemic, there are promising signs. And it feels so good to be gathered here in worship with you among friends. I do want to thank you for your continued generosity and commitment that you make as a congregation to our church's wider mission. Out of all of our congregations, you rank in the top 10 in gifts to Disciples Mission Fund giving and in the top 20 in special day offering giving. Thank you. As we collect our Week of Compassion offering today, you can be assured that the gifts you make will be well used to provide relief and recovery to those who suffer from natural disasters in Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio, and around the world. And the opportunity for a fresh start for refugees who are displaced by war and natural disasters. I want to express my thanks to the members of the search committee who served you so well. It was a joy to work with them. 
It helps when you know who your church is and who you want it to be. Thank you, Carolyn McCracken, and all who served on the committee. I am particularly grateful for Jeff Harris, who faithfully served on this committee as he has served in so many ways in previous years. I grieve with all of you his untimely passing. Merlin, today is the day that Greenfield Christian Church formally and officially claims you and installs you as their pastor. It is a moment of celebration and thanksgiving. The, <laughs> the search committee serving on behalf of the whole congregation worked with diligence and discernment. They did their work well and they discovered that you were the right one to give leadership to this congregation at this time in its life. <laughs> your leadership is clear and direct and your commitment is evident. But you are not the only one to give leadership to this church at this time. So even as we proclaim you today, the pastor of this church, we also proclaim that it's not all about you. <laughs> it is a common pitfall in ministry for pastors to assume that the life of the congregation revolves around them. Some succumb to this pitfall out of their own ego needs or their insecurity or control issues or organizational disarray. And too often, congregations will encourage that model. It is not a healthy pattern. In 1955, Life magazine did a photo essay on the busy life of a minister. These were the years just after World War II and local churches were booming, including Greenfield Christian Church. Life magazine followed around Pastor Lowell Schwantz, a Lutheran minister, in a new church start in Great Falls, Montana. Life's readers got to see Pastor Schwantz offering a prayer at the city council, making a report on funding to the church board, teaching a Sunday school class to young children, running off the worship bulletin on the mimeograph, painting an advertising sign for an upcoming event, arranging Christmas decorations, taking his six-year-old daughter to the dentist with a sore tooth, collapsing on a couch in between meetings before Cub Scouts, and after midnight, working on next Sunday's sermon. Pastor Schwantz comes off as dedicated, harried, and exhausted. It hasn't gotten much better in the last 60 years. Today, 90% of pastors work more than 54 hours a week. The average pastor gets 6.8 hours of sleep per night, and 80% believe that pastoral ministry affects their families negatively. That is not good. We should know better. The Bible teaches us better. One of the earliest stories in the Bible is about Moses, who was burning the candle at both ends, trying to keep up with the needs 
of the children of Israel as they made their way through the wilderness. Moses was wearing himself out, going day after day from early morning to late at night, addressing organizational needs, solving disputes, and attempting to interpret God's expectations. His father-in-law, Jethro, saw the toll it was taking and in a caring way invited him to reflect on the way he was expressing his leadership. Moses did not see initially that he had any other options. The people came to him day after day, all day long with various disputes and he tried to resolve those and send them on their way. Moses was a one-man judge, arbitrator, and pastoral counselor. And it was taking all of his time and energy. What he was doing was important, for sure. But he was burning out. If you looked at his organizational chart, it had Moses' name written all over it. The difference between a pastor-style congregation and a program-style congregation is precisely to this point. In a pastor-style congregation, like the one Pastor Schwantz led in 1955, the minister is involved in every aspect of the congregation's life. Nothing happens that the minister does not know about usually initiates, and almost always is present for. Most of our churches operate in this style. Greenfield Christian Church has, from time to time, but not always. The problem with this style is it's self-limiting. There is only so much that one person can do and a finite number of persons for whom one person can provide meaningful care. It is not the only way, though. Alternatively, the program-style church depends on a variety of leaders, lay and clergy, paid and unpaid, each expressing initiative and giving leadership in discrete areas. The pastor in this system functions as a connecting link, a communicator, and an encourager. More happens because not everything is dependent upon the capacity of one person. Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, encouraged Moses to establish such a system. He said to appoint people over thousands and some over hundreds, some over fifties, and some over tens. So Jethro proposed a different organizational chart than the one Moses had fallen into. Let those people you appoint decide all the minor cases, he said, and save yourself for the big cases. Now, not all that extra help needs to be on the payroll, but they do need to be qualified for the task they are asked to oversee. The most important committee in any congregation is the nominating committee. It is their job, along with you, Marilyn, to get the right people in the right spots. Jethro said the same. He told Moses, look for able people who fear God, who are trustworthy and hate dishonest gain. In other words, be discerning. But most of all, delegate. Do not try to do it all. Jesus subscribed to the same organizational principle. Do you remember that time that he was preaching by the seaside and the day grew long and there were 
thousand hungry people standing around. Jesus' disciples came to him for guidance on what to do. Remember what he said to them? First, he said, you feed them. That stumped them for a moment. Jesus wanted them to think it through. So the next thing he did was ask them to inventory their resources. What do you have? Five loaves and two fish was the answer. Bring them here, he said. And then he blessed them. Now, the way the text reads, it sounds like the blessing is on the loaves and fish. But I don't think so. At least not exclusively on that food. I think the blessing was also on the disciples. I think when it says he blessed them, that the disciples are the them. Jesus delegates, and the result? Everyone was fed. I think that story about the feeding of the 5,000 may have had greater impact on the development of the disciples than we sometimes think. In the Gospel of Luke, it was immediately following that event that Peter makes his great confession that Jesus is the Messiah. When you give folks something to do and then let them do it, they have a story and a witness to make. Some of you know that like Pastor Schwantz, we mentioned earlier, I was a new church pastor in Texas for several years. Creekwood Christian Church in Flower Mound, Texas is the name of the church. It was my delight to help give birth. Several years after that congregation began, I accompanied several of the members of my church to the General Assembly of our church. Walking through the exhibit hall one day with a couple from my congregation, Ed and Dina Reeve, we ran into someone that they knew from many years earlier, and so they greeted him and they introduced me. The friend asked Ed and Dina what they had been up to. We have started a church, they said. We have started a church? What, what about me, the founding pastor, standing right there? No, we have started a church. And they were right. They had started a church. It was part of who they understood themselves to be. It was fundamental to their identity. It wasn't all about me. Merlin, the search committee was excited about you as soon as they met you. They told me so. Like the sages of old, you came from the East bearing gifts, not of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but of wisdom, dedication, and faith. I do hope that you brought a melody in your heart 
That is what you are called to offer here, to be here, the melody. Not the whole chorus. Not each part of the harmony. But the melody. So sing it strong. Sing it loud. Sing it boldly. There is a historic Greenfield Christian song that is about family, community, encouragement and support of youth, justice, peace, mission, local and global, and the gospel. Learn that song well. And then give it your riff. Add some new verses. Lay down the melody in such a way that others can pick it up and add their own harmony, their descant, their obligato, their chords. You can make beautiful music here. I am confident in that. And God expects it. God wills it. And God provides the power for us to do it. So may God's blessing be on each one of you this day. May God's blessing be on this congregation. May God's blessing be on the one church that we share. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite Merlin to join me in front of the communion table for the litany. <laughs> find the, the litany in your bulletin and project it on the screen. Merlin, do you accept the responsibilities of the office to which you have been called by this congregation? Do you promise to dedicate yourself to your ministry here? Believing with all my heart that Jesus is the Christ, I promise to devote the utmost of my ability to Christ's ministry and to faithfully perform all my duties on behalf of this congregation and the church at large. And now will the elders, deacons, and officers of the congregation please stand. I call upon you to reaffirm your own ministry as elders, deacons, and officers in this congregation. Will you not only affirm Marilyn's ministry, but also partner with her in the ministries of Christ in this place? The whole congregation is a partner in this covenant. As members and friends of the congregation, will you commit to shared leadership with Merlin, working with her to fulfill Christ's mission in this place? I give thanks for the ways you have embraced me. I promise to be your pastor walking with you in the challenges that impact us individually and together. I will strive to be a teacher and preacher among you, seeking to understand with you God's claim on us in this time. And I promise to commit with you God's and I promise to commit my strength and gifts, my imagination and courage to our ministry together as we seek to fulfill God's purpose in this place. And now as we invoke God's spirit in prayer, I invite you to reach out your hand in blessing to Merlin. Let us pray together. 
Loving God, creator of us all, and one who calls us through the ages to care for your people and to give leadership for your purpose. We give thanks this day for the Greenfield Christian Church, for its long history of witness and service and worship of you. We are thankful that yet another has come to provide leadership in this place. We have already, in these months, been able to see Merlin and her dedication to the gospel, her commitment to being a good pastor, her desire that this congregation serve well its community and its world. And so we ask that you continue to equip her here. Help her to be a compassionate pastor with listening and caring ears, an eloquent preacher who helps us to understand in fresh ways your call upon our lives, an able administrator who, along with others, helps to use well the resources you have given so that we can fulfill your purpose in this place. We are grateful for Merlin. We are grateful that she has said yes. We too say yes to her and ask your blessing on her as she serves this congregation for many, many days to come. Uplift her, O oh God, we pray, with your care. Amen. Amen. And now would you join me in welcoming your new pastor, Marilyn Mabel. Thank you all of you. celebrate at the table in memory of Jesus Christ. All those who profess their, Jesus, in their faith in Jesus Christ are welcome to participate. You may be seated. As we prepare our elements, we remember Jesus Christ, who on the night before he died, gathered his disciples to share a meal. He took the bread and broke it and gave it to them and said, take and eat, this is my body. 
And then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to your table in thanksgiving for the gift of grace that it represents. We admit our human frailty, but seek your Holy Spirit's help in overcoming our selfish behavior. Help us to freely forgive and to love deeply as you have so generously shown us by your sacrifice. May the spiritual nourishment we receive here overflow into others as we show Christ to the world by word and deed. In the most precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
time we respond to a need in the world, we bear witness to the unity of our table, faithfully sharing the gifts that we have as an expression of Christ's love. In working together with partners, we represent the disciples of Christ's commitment to unity, making our resources reach farther, and growing our impact in, on a global scale. Your donation to Week of Compassion provides assistance to those in need in other parts of the world, as well as right here in the United States. For example, a 56-year-old woman living in a country formerly called Burma, whose husband died in 2019, thought her future was gone too. She managed to sell herbs in an open-air market. Then COVID-19 hit and restrictions prevented her from doing so. Then she learned that Week of Compassion partners through Church World Services to provide chickens to families in greatest need, as well as training in animal care and husbandry. Now her future looks secure. Here in the U.S., Week of Compassion has connected with pastors, congregations, etc., to provide immediate response and prepare for a long-term recovery for those affected by the December 2021 tornadoes that came through Western Kentucky. This year's theme is Love Remains. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love, 1 Corinthians 13:13. 13, 13. Now, here's a video from Week of Compassion. Why is love the greatest? Because love is action. Love is resilient. Love is compassionate. Love digs deeper, goes further, reaches higher. Love gives and then gives some more. Love is big and love is small. Week of Compassion has been putting our love in action all around the world and right here at home for over 70 years. By responding to disasters, feeding the hungry, digging wells for those who lack water, building for those who need shelter, caring for the sick, empowering the marginalized, and equipping those who are ready to change their world in the name of love. God's love. Because when all is said and done, it's love that remains. Put love into action. Give to Week of Compassion. our tithes and offerings this morning, we ask your blessings on them. Let them be used to further your work here and around the world. You know the needs and you know our hearts where these tithes and offerings need to be used. In your name we pray. Amen. As we prepare for our final hymn, How Great Thou Art. Consider the possibility of walking up if you aren't already a member of this church through commitment of faith and through baptism. You may simply want to uh, recommit to your faith or transfer your membership from another church. During this hymn, come forward. Let us now sing.
So I told Merlin that it wasn't all about her. But here's the deal. It is all about you. You've called her to be your leader. Implied in that call is that you're ready and willing to follow her and to bring alongside her your own gifts for leadership and service. It can happen here in fresh ways that bring a delight to each one of us, a delight to the community we are seeking to serve, and a delight to God's heart. So blessings on each one of you as you do that. May you feel your own call to follow Christ in this place and to find community here where that can be expressed anew. God be with you. Amen. Thank you.